Hello everyone, welcome to Schneider Electric PLC training tutorials where you will learn Schneider Electric PLC programming. In this lesson, we are going to learn input output devices. So input output devices, commonly abbreviated IO devices, are generally of two types: the digital or discrete input output and analog input output. So we are going to start with the discrete input output. What are discrete input output? Discrete input output are alleged that can only be on or off, true or false. They are the easiest and the most common form of input output. Now let's think of a simple light switch in your house. The, the switch either turns the light on or it turns it off. Because discrete signal exists in one of two states, they are represented with a square signal to show its on and off state. In the world of PLCs, there are many uses of discrete IOs, such as its use as input. Some of the devices that supply on off signals are switches, push buttons, photo eye, float switches, and proximity switches. Photo eyes which are devices that emit infrared light beams can sense when the beam has been broken. They are used extensively to detect packages in an industrial process. Now let's look at discrete outputs. So discrete output operate in a similar way as discrete inputs. And some examples of devices with discrete outputs include valves, horns, stack lights, motor starter solenoids, and, and pumps. These devices, when they are, they are on, when they are active and they are off, when they are not active. The application of your control system will determine the type of discrete device you choose. There are a variety of discrete output devices and modules that can be used in a PSA system to send and receive on-off signals. These devices can be AC or DC and are available in different voltage ranges 0 to 24 volt DC and 0 to 230 volt AC are two voltage ranges available with 0 being the off signal and 24 volt DC or 230 volt AC being the on signal. Usually there is a threshold for detection where 0 to 24 volt module will detect anything above 22 volt DC as on signal and anything below 2 volt as off signal. Some unique application of discrete outputs will be on and off triggering of circuit breakers, running and stopping of generators, opening and shutting down of water valves, turning on and off of alarm light, starting and stopping of conveyor and so many others. Now let's jump into analog I.O. devices. Analog signals are signals that can vary or change. Signals like temperature, sound, and pressure, as well as light, are some examples of analog signals. It is important to note that analog signals can be either in the form of a current or in the form of a voltage. Now back to our light switch example. Let's now install a mode lighting in our home. Instead of the regular on-off switch, we are going to use a dimmer switch. The dimmer switch will vary the resistance of the line, causing the light to dim or brighten as we choose. The voltage supply to the light will not be a constant level voltage, but rather it's going to be between the upper and lower limit levels. This is usually represented by a sine wave. Analog outputs can be used to manipulate the electricity output on a generator. A 0 to 3 volt DC analog output might be used to force a generator from 0 to 2000 kilowatt or a 4 to 20 milliamp analog output can be used to calibrate a temperature gauge from minus 20 degree Fahrenheit to 200 degree Fahrenheit. As you can see, 
There are many opportunities for applications of analog inputs and outputs in the industrial ecosystem. There are a variety of ranges of analog input-output signal for an analog input-output device. And they usually include a minus 10 to plus 10 volt DC, 0 to plus 10 volt DC, 1 to plus 5 volt DC, 0 to at least 1 milliamps or 4 to 20 milliamps. With analog signals as a substitute of the simple on-off open-close possibilities, you can have 0 to 100 pascal, 0 to 100 degrees or whatever you are measuring as an input or driving as an output. Some real world examples of analog inputs in industrial environment might encompass engine temperature sensor, that is to say a resistance temperature detector or a thermocouple, or oil pressure sensor as well as weight scale sensors. Okay, so that will be all for this video. Please visit our site at www.expertlearningzone.com to get detailed access to some of the explicit engineering content you will need for this training. Thanks for watching. If you find this video helpful, please like, share, and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video.